Okay, good morning and a very warm welcome to uh, everyone here in class as well as students online. We'll pray and uh, we will begin. So let me just begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again, Lord, for giving us this opportunity to spend time in your word. We pray that, uh, Lord, your word will build us up, that, uh, Father, your word will prepare our hearts, Lord, to serve you and, uh, Father God, to live uh, as mighty witnesses, Father, for the glory of your name. Uh, we commit, Lord, this entire course of the prophetic and apostolic ministry. We pray that... Uh, uh, Lord, it'll it'll be more than uh, just theoretical knowledge that uh, we will move, O oh God, in the prophetic and Father, that we will demonstrate the apostolic. Father, we pray for your blessing upon every single student, Lord, who is part of uh, this learning process on all the platforms. Lord, we pray that, uh, Lord, you would, O oh God, uh, Lord, just fill them with your spirit, O oh God. Uh, and Father, cause them to flow uh, in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We thank you once again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, hope uh, all of you have had a, a good year or a good break. <laughs> We're just starting the new year now. So a very happy new year to uh, all the students. Um, uh, I think there's a comment here stating that the audio is uh, somewhat low. Uh, just checking if online students, can you hear me properly? Would you want the audio increased? It's fine? Okay, it's it's fine. Okay, great. Yeah, students are saying it's fine. Sure. So uh, let's begin with the prophetic. This course, course 207, it has to do with the prophetic ministry as well as the apostolic ministry. Uh, but we will take it up in two sections. So first, we are going to look at the prophetic ministry and understand uh, how to really flow in the prophetic and be a blessing to the people. Uh, and then once we complete the learning about the prophetic, we will go into studying what the apostolic stands for. And for this course, we will use um, initially understanding the prophetic, one of the APC publications, so you can just download it from apcwo.org forward slash books and uh, follow through. We are going to go through that book uh, sequentially. And uh, for the apostolic study, we will have notes, which I will share with you once we complete the prophetic uh, ministry. And uh, in this course, we will have two assignments, both of which will be 50 marks and 50 marks each. Uh, which I will put out periodically and you can uh, actually, you know, go ahead and uh, answer the questions. And as we've been saying, want to encourage all students to maintain your score uh, in the assignments. Out of 100, it should be a minimum of 35% or more and uh, attendance-wise 85% or more. So please be mindful of that, especially the online students. So coming now to uh, the prophetic. So one beautiful thing that we see today is that the Lord is restoring the prophetic ministry in the church. We have seen the many seasons that the church has gone through. And we've also learned about the dark ages and how the renewal of the church took place step by step. And we saw how, uh, you know, there, there was this um, uh, concept of the baptism restored healing was restored, uh, and then baptism in the Holy Spirit, that's uh, a revelation that was restored to the church. And the time that we live in right now, it is a time when God is restoring the fivefold ministry offices. So that means that we will see believers uh, as well as people who are positioned in uh, leadership. The fivefold ministry offices also function in their gifts. So our attempt is to understand what this prophetic ministry is all about. Now, this is nothing new as far as the Bible is concerned. We know that in the Old Testament, the prophetic was very much functional. 
and we will discuss about the Old Testament and the prophetic ministry shortly. Even in the New Testament, starting with Jesus himself, there were prophecies, uh, there was, um, you know, words foretold, uh, and in the uh, churches, the prophetic gift was encouraged by Paul. So it has been there. It's nothing new. Just because we are discussing about it, it doesn't make it new. However, the understanding of what this prophetic gift is all about and how this prophetic gift really um, flows through us is something that we need to get a grasp of because then we will be able to use it or function in it in uh, an appropriate way. Similarly, we said prophetic offices. So the fivefold ministry offices, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. So we will see many such people emerge among us in the office of a prophet. But at that time, we need some understanding of what this whole uh, position is all about and the function of that role of a prophet is all about. And that is why we are trying to learn uh, about this ministry. And another thing that we could easily say is that because God has been restoring uh, the prophetic and the fivefold ministry gifts, we are getting a deeper knowledge now. So maybe the previous generations uh, from us, they may have um, moved in these things, but not discussed it as such. So even terminology that we use today, right? These are all things that have emerged over the last uh, couple of years as we are observing more and more of the prophetic manifesting. Okay, So this is what is going on and which is why we need to understand what the prophetic ministry is all about. Uh, it will help us to function in this ministry. Now, Another thing that we want us to recognize is we have a God who speaks. So uh, if our God were not a communicating God, like imagine, you know, he just uh, gives us a book of rules and uh, he wants us to function by those rules and that's it. Okay. He doesn't ever talk once again to us. Um, then we don't really need the prophetic. The prophetic is God speaking in the now. He has already spoken in his word. Now, all of us will agree that the Bible is already God speaking to us. Okay. So if God were never to speak another new word to us, we still have uh, we, an understanding of God's heart because the Bible has already been given to us. But what God does is he also speaks in the now. So we'll see how he does that. He inspires a word into our hearts in the current season of our lives. And all of us would agree that words are so powerful. We can very, um, very uh, uh, sort of unanimously say that whenever somebody has spoken a discouraging word, Maybe when we were children and we didn't have much understanding, when somebody uh, tried to bully us or put us down, it hurt us so much. How did they do it? The words that they spoke. So words carry so much power. Now imagine a positive word that may have been spoken to us, maybe by our parents or our teachers when we were picked for a competition and we couldn't really... Um, uh, believe that we could do it, you know, that I can paint or I can speak or I can be a part of sports. Our teachers may have said something like, you can do it, uh, you know, just practice, you can win the prize. And that gave us the confidence. So we all understand that words are powerful. They either motivate us or they discourage us. And that is the reason uh, we need to understand that even when we talk about the prophetic, you know, imagine if a word of a loved one uh, was so meaningful in a difficult time, a word from God, what a difference that can make, isn't it? 
uh, just maybe you know sometimes we want god to uh, speak volumes we want god to say everything about our lives we want god to uh, you know reveal the future uh, what career we are going to take and uh, you know what uh, ministry we are going to have how is our church going to look so we we desire to know so much from god's heart now i'm not saying that god does not reveal all this he does in fact he has given us the holy spirit we have the written word of god in which he has already revealed many things to us we have the holy spirit and jesus said when i go i will send you the holy spirit he will lead you into all truth which means that through the word through the holy spirit god is already speaking to us but even when we have these things whenever there is something that needs to be spoken even just one word from god makes a world of a difference you know we are stepping into a new year and we want a word from the lord and we, we have this uh, uh, you know in in our church the word of the lord for 2024 what is god going to do this year so the now word of god it could be so many things that god speaks the way he spoke to abraham you know i'm going to do this i'm going to do that you're going to be like this oh maybe just a word right we can testify that it makes a world of a difference maybe um, a word like arise okay think about it if we receive just one word from god arise we get that confidence fear not okay be strong be courageous i my presence shall go with you one sentence that's all we we can literally like feel in our spirit in our uh, you know every part of our being that uh, uh, there is that strength and confidence that comes into us so that's the desire that we have because we have a speaking god because we have a god who communicates so it's a beautiful thing for us to trust god uh, to speak to us and uh, as i mentioned earlier the church has been through uh, different seasons and uh, from 400 to 1400 ad after which you know, that dark ages that we speak about uh, god started restoring the church with various moves of god we had the protestant movement in the 1500s we had um, where uh, you know the puritan movement in the 1600s we had uh, the baptism and baptism of water separation of church this understanding came to us during the puritan movement 1700s where the holiness movement and sanctification of the church was spoken about 1800s is the divine healing movement and the 1900s is the pentecostal movement and right, right now uh, the you know 2000s and the 20th century we are having the restoration of the prophetic offices and the under, deeper understanding regarding the gifts of the holy spirit so before we delve deeper we are going to touch on many aspects and understand especially the prophetic gift uh, and uh, how to move in it how to activate it what are some practical guidelines which will help us function in that prophetic gift but before i get into that um this is just an introductory class but uh, are there any thoughts or questions about whatever we have spoken so far or anything regarding the prophetic ministry that you just want to put forward please uh, feel free you can you know talk about it and then i'll i'll get into some other details of the prophetic yes yes francis so i'm not i am not want to ask but i have a question like this. yeah so even like you said man like one word will encourage but how we will understand it's from god or like from our thought yeah yeah so one day what happens i'm praying for a person i sense on word of god so but i am literally i'm lot of confusing from my side or 
god's will god yes. want to talk so yes. how to understand like yeah like is from really from god or from our thought okay see one thing that we must be clear about is that god gives us this gift as believers we can all flow in the prophetic gift so there is something like the prophetic gift which flows through us okay so that is something we have to understand that means that from time to time when we desire god does release these words to us so some words are from god now the challenge that you are talking about is identifying which is from god and which is from maybe you know ourselves um, but for that we are going to talk about it that there is some level of um, uh, preparing yourself okay so when we do things like that we will get a better understanding of what is from god and what is from us so if you may if you want to use another simpler term practice the gift is from god that we cannot change right the origin origin or the source of the gift is god but when the gift is released to us the way we work with the gift is in our hands so one a person or a believer can train themselves practice train prepare ourselves to recognize what is from god so the more you flow in these gifts the quicker you would be able to identify that hey this is from god okay so it's a matter of uh, training yourself is what i would say francis initially uh, or in the beginning when we are just starting to flow it may be a struggle but when you recognize you know you 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 need to step out and then you recognize hey i was actually correct so the next time you have more confidence the following time you have even more confidence so that way you kind of pick it up so it's a matter of practice okay sure so uh, any other uh, initial thoughts so we can proceed forward let me just see the online students uh, online students please feel free to post your questions it's a very um crucial subject and uh, it's good to clarify your doubts if you have any uh, okay so let me go forward we will follow the notes just so you know we we are in sync so right now i'm going to talk about prophetic progression we've been saying that in today's time and age god is releasing the prophetic gift and uh, more and more people will function in it but in the bible we have certain uh, levels if you want to call it of the operation of the prophetic we would term it as you know these levels or these um um sort of gradations we can we can classify them on the basis of um the the gift that is given and um, you know the kind of ministry that god calls different people to so we see in scripture there's a mention of the gift of prophecy in first uh, corinthians chapter 12 you know, there all the nine gifts are listed and uh, one of the gifts which is listed is uh, the gift of prophecy okay similarly when we go to first corinthians chapter 14 even there paul talks about the gift of prophecy and he makes an a very um, uh, interesting comment uh, in the beginning of that passage of uh, 1st corinthians chapter 1 he says you know pursue love um, and that you may prophesy you know earnestly desire to prophesy you pursue love and you desire to prophesy he says and then he goes on to set many different um, uh, rules for the operation of the gifts of the spirit in the congregational setting and then he closes again you know uh, where he says things like if you want to prophesy all of you prophesy one by one okay so the idea that we get in the passages that paul writes is that in the corinthian church it seems like everyone was operating in the prophetic okay people were prophesying which is why he
he was writing to everyone. Like if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13, that's a passage that we are all very familiar with, where Paul talks about love, that uh, we need to carry God kind of love. Now everyone will agree that Paul was talking to everyone. So when he says you need to have love, you know, love is patient, love is kind, he's talking to all the believers. In continuation to what he's saying, see, we are the ones who have put chapter and verse. But when Paul wrote it, he wrote it in continuation. He continued from the passage about love and he says, desire earnestly, you know, the best gifts, prophesy. And then again, he goes on to say, when you prophesy, prophesy one by one. Okay. So the point is that he was talking to all believers and instructing all believers on the operation of the gift of prophecy. So one of the things that we can recognize is that there is something known as the simple gift of prophecy. Simple gift of prophecy that all believers can operate in. And this is mentioned for us in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 3, where Paul talks about um, prophecy, which is meant for edification, exhortation, and comfort. Okay? We will talk more about uh, the simple gift of prophecy and you know other things later on. This is just an introduction. So he uh, speaks to us about the operation of the simple gift of prophecy to encourage, build up, and comfort other believers through ordinary believers. So that would be your first level where all believers can prophesy. Okay, so is it correct to say all believers can prophesy? Yeah, to some extent we can. The gift of prophecy operates through every believer. So that would be your simple gift of prophecy, which functions through all believers. Now, if we look at the progression, what we see is that believers, some believers, are called into a certain ministry function. Okay? And one of the ministry functions is the prophetic ministry. And we read about this in Romans chapter 12 from verses 4 to 8. Um, if someone is able to read this passage, you can quickly turn to it and uh, read it. Romans chapter 12. Verses 4 to 8, please. Yeah, please. Romans 12, yeah. 4 to 8. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having then gift differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in the proposition to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it for our ministering. The, the He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhort, exhortation, he who gives with liberty, he who leads with diligence, he who sows mercy with cheerfulness. Okay. Sure. So in this um, list, we also have prophecy, right? So where it is mentioned, he who prophesies. But this is referring more to a grace gift of God. So the spiritual gift of prophecy, all believers can move in it to some extent. But there is something known as a grace gift. It is also termed as a ministry gift. So what happens is that God sometimes calls um believers or if I may put it this way he gives the grace to operate in the prophetic ministry so to a greater extent there are certain believers who can uh, who can you know function in the prophetic more than what is expected of a simple believer okay so that would be your uh, grace gift of prophecy or there are people who call it ministry gift of prophecy. So that now is the next level of the operation of the prophetic. Now coming to the 
you know, sort of a major level of the prophetic is the prophetic office that we read about in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 12, where God has spoken to us and said that Christ gave gifts to the church, the apostle, prophet, you know, pastor, teacher, evangelist. So there, a term such as a prophet is used. That would be the office of a prophet. So we got to make distinction of these three levels. Simple prophesying believer, somebody who has a prophetic ministry, and somebody who is a prophet. Okay. Now what is the difference when we especially talk about <coughs> a prophet? There is a reference to this term prophet, as I mentioned earlier, in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. Again, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 28, there is a mention of this a term, prophet, okay, referring to the office of a prophet. It simply means that somebody who is in the office of a prophet is assigned by God. Because Christ gave gifts to the church, meaning they have been called by God specifically to operate in those ministry offices. That also suggests that everyone is not a prophet. Now, I, being a believer operating in the gift of prophecy, I may prophesy a lot, but it doesn't make me a prophet. Are you understanding what I'm trying to say? So the progression would go like prophesying believer, somebody who's operating in the grace gift or the ministry gift of prophecy, and then the office of a prophet. So somebody in the office of a prophet is specifically called by God. So again, comes the question, I want to be a prophet. Can I be a prophet? It doesn't work like that. If God has called you to be a prophet, you will be a prophet. But if God has not chosen us to be a prophet, we cannot be a prophet. But as a believer, can I operate to the best capacity possible in the prophetic? That is possible. But even if I'm a very prophetic believer, I am not a prophet. Okay? Are you understanding what I'm trying to say? So this is the progression. Now, what is so different about the office of a prophet? You know, we, we recognize that the office of a prophet comes with something known as governmental responsibility and governmental authority by which we understand that God holds the prophet accountable at a greater level for the, for the gift that has been given to the prophet. Now, because they carry governmental authority and responsibility, they would also be people who would release powerful prophetic words. So what are these powerful prophetic words? They could be words that have to do regarding the, uh, the coming movements within the church or the body of Christ. Now, a simple believer, a simple prophesying believer may have an idea that God wants to do something like this, but it would be somebody who is a governmental authority, who with authority and clarity can call forth, you know, these words and say, you know, there is a move of God coming. This is what the Lord is doing. Or uh, they may speak to the nations. They may, um, you know, there is an aspect of warring in the supernatural with the prophetic. So powerful things that a prophet can do with the grace that God has given uh, to his life, uh, a simple prophesying believer will never be able to do that. So these are the differences. Okay. So uh, somebody who is in the office of a prophet carries governmental responsibility and governmental authority. And the Bible clearly teaches us that God has always wanted, you know, uh, people in these positions. So when you look at the book of Acts, okay, we find there that uh, God called people as apostles. They were apostles, right? The 
12 apostles of the Lamb. And uh, we see in Ephesians 2, 20, the Bible also says that uh, the church, it has been built on the foundations of the apostles and the prophets. Right? Would somebody uh, quickly go to that scripture? It's also a key scripture for us. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 20. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 20. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Yeah. So you see that having been built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. So, even in the early church, you had the apostles and the prophets who were like the pillars of the church. They were strengthening the church, guiding the church, uh, releasing more of the supernatural, right? Uh, so, all that was happening. When you look at people like, uh, you know, uh, uh, Agabus, there's a mention of this man called Agabus. He's called as a prophet of God, right? So there were people who were operational in these ministry offices. And uh, even as we go forward, we will see people in the prophetic office. Now, one more thing that we must be clear about is that we may not have, uh, we'll discuss this later. When we say apostles, there are classifications. So, the apostles of the early church were very different. They were the foundational apostles. They were the ones who gave us the doctrines. So today when we have apostles, we don't expect them to you know, rewrite uh, parts of the scripture for us because it's already done. So the apostles of the Lamb, okay, the, they were uh, some of our foundational uh, apostles. Their role was different. But today we can still have the apostolic, we can still have the apostles. Their role will be very different. Similarly, when we consider the prophetic, we can't really compare. Yes, there will be a lot of um, a common aspects as far as the operation of the gift is concerned, but there will be differences. You know, how God really uses the prophetic in different times and seasons. But we have to recognize that apostles and prophets are very important part of the church. Uh, and, and in fact, as what Anand read, the church has been built on the foundation of apostles and prophets. Yeah, yes, Anna. Question is, yeah. uh, grace gift of God, we, we saw, right? Yes. So the people who have the grace gift of God are not called to be as a prophet? Um, so, see, being a prophet is a, is a very distinct and clear thing. Now, somebody who's operational in the grace gift of prophecy may be a prophet. That only time will tell. Okay, but not all the people with the grace gift of prophecy are prophets. I hope you understood. And when we see this at Ephesians 2.20, yes. like, there will be apostles and prophets. Yeah. It was talking about the past, what happened. Uh -huh. So is is it is there anything in in Bible that we will have apo apostles and prophets now also? Yes. And if so, uh -huh. as a normal people, how we can how we have to recognize them as an apostles and prophets? And many people are just naming themselves as prophets and apostles. How we can recognize? Them? Yeah. So that that's exactly what we are trying to answer through this course. Um, see Ephesians four eleven and twelve. Paul wrote to the Ephesian church, right? That Christ himself has given us, apostles, prophets. And as we study uh, the epistles of Paul and the New Testament books, nothing really says that it has stopped. Isn't it? So, and Paul so clearly talks about how to function in the prophetic gift. All of this only goes to say that Yes, God is raising up apostles, prophets. He has been raising up. He is raising up. Uh, and uh, we are going to see more and more of this happening. But again, a very important question that Anand asked, how to recognize, right? So that is something that as we look at scriptures, we'll get a better idea of how to recognize. Uh, now, 
people are calling themselves prophets and calling themselves apostles um ideally that should happen the other way okay meaning for example let's say i am operating in the prophetic okay and people are uh, uh, um, blessed by my ministry over time people may recognize oh this is a prophet of god and then people start saying a prophet so and so that is more honorable than doing it the other way okay because uh, we may i mean we run the risk of making an error if we start off by saying you know i i might be um, i might have the grace gift of prophecy but again that doesn't make me a prophet no so it's actually risky to do it that way yeah but as people we will be able to recognize because uh, we will we'll notice that someone is functioning so powerfully so accurately in every season of their lives in the prophetic and god is doing amazing things through their lives you know through the prophetic then we we can't help but say hey here's a prophet of god right so uh, that that's how we will recognize so i'll give you some pointers that should help you so here in our uh, notes uh, on page 8 on the uh, pdf notes that i have i don't know which one it would be in your uh, books pastor ashish has shared a testimony of his life where he writes about a very difficult time as a student in the united states um, when uh, for the sake of ministry he he spent uh, all the money that he had and had a wonderful ministry trip and came back to the us but he recognized that his bank account was down to zero and he had no uh, you know money to sustain himself so it was a very dark period of his life and how god orchestrated a visit to a, a particular camp where they were teaching about all these things you know the gifts of the spirit how to operate in the prophetic so he went for that and he was also ministering in that uh, uh, camp he ministered but he writes about meeting a particular prophet of god in that uh, camp and uh, uh, he he writes about how he was so amazed that this prophet just came up to pastor ashish and started prophesying you know and said so many things which were already in his heart things like uh, you are here only for a season god is going to take you back to your own people india where you will establish a strong work of god i mean these are all like when pastor went to the camp nobody really knows what is in his heart right um so when this prophet started saying all these things he was so amazed like wow how can someone who does not know me at all know what i'm thinking and what god has been speaking in my life and so i would just encourage you to read through that prophecy with all the details it's amazing how uh, you know someone can speak through the heart of god and pastor actually shares a scripture uh, in that testimony isaiah 44 and verse 26 where uh, he says who confirms the word of his servant and performs the counsel of his messengers that's the god we serve you know god when we speak a word from god right it's not in vain and uh, uh, the pastor says that there are many things that he spoke that have already happened and there are many things that he is looking forward to so when there's a true prophetic word uh, you know we we will see god's uh, god move in line with what he actually speaks upon our lives okay but of course there's another point there which is about personal obedience we'll come to that later you know we can't just say oh god you said and you and live in complete disobedience and you know say why is it not happening you said i will be a pastor and then you know god is like but you're not cooperating how how do i cause you to be that pastor that i want you to be when you're just not willing to to uh, walk in my ways you know so there's that aspect of personal obedience also but um when we obey god and when we walk in line with what he speaks surely we can see the word of god confirmed in our lives okay so uh, this is a little bit about the prophetic today today's class is 
but an introductory class. Um, so just feel free if you have any other thoughts, uh, clarifications, it's nice to discuss. Okay, so my, my assumption is that you'll probably start having questions as we discuss more. Okay, so let me touch on one uh, small theme before we close for today. Uh, in the Bible, the earliest person who is called as a prophet or the first person who is called as a prophet is, any guesses? No minus marks, the wrong answer. <laughs> so you don't have to be scared to ask. That person is called prophet that. Who is that? First time. First time in the world. Moses. Okay. You, you feel it's Moses? Okay. Actually, it's Abraham. Yeah. So in Genesis chapter 20 and verse 7, when God spoke to King Abimelech uh, to ask Abraham to pray for him, God said, he is a prophet and he will pray for you and you shall live. So now, how, how was Abraham a prophet? You know, you don't see from his life, thus says the Lord, you know. Or uh, not like one Elijah or an Elisha personality. How is God calling Abraham a prophet? So that word prophet in the Hebrew there is the word Nabi. And Nabi means inspired. Inspired man. Inspired by God. So what is the name that we give to Abraham usually? Father of faith. One more. We sing a song also. I am a friend of God, right? So I'm a friend of God. So the beauty about Abraham is his communion with God. What do we call communion with God? Relationship, but communication with God, two-way communication. Fellowship, can we call it prayer? Prayer, yeah. So the beauty about Abraham is he communicated with God. So many things we see. He's discussing with God. When Sodom and Gomorrah has to be destroyed, he's actually going there and interceding for Sodom and Gomorrah. So he was a man of prayer. He was a man who understood the divine purposes of God because of his close relationship with God and a prayer life. We can easily say a man of prayer. So what we recognize here is that for for a prophet, from the life of Abraham, what we learn is one can be very prophetic when they have a prayer life. Because what is a prophetic? Nothing but what does God want? What does God say in the now? Understanding God's heart, right? So when we are prayerful people, we can be prophetic. It's easier to be prophetic. But the other way around, right? Uh, is, is when we are not prayerful, it's very hard to be prophetic. Okay, so that's the testimony from the life of Abraham. He heard from God and God himself called him a prophet and said, Hey, uh, Abimelech, you have Abraham pray for you and you will be healed. So we learn about prayer and intercession and the connection of prayer and intercession to the, to the strong manifestation of the prophetic through anyone's life. Now, of course, Abraham was a prophet, but we can all learn a lesson. You know, we don't know which one of us is a prophet. But for us, even as prophesying believers, when we have a strong prayer life, a life of intercession, we will be strongly prophetic. Okay? So with that thought, I'm just going to wrap for today and uh, we will pick up from where uh, we stopped later on. Um, so let's pray and close then. And I want to request one of us to... Um, lead. First prayer, who wants to grab that opportunity? <laughs> yeah.
Father God, we thank you. We bless you for this time, Lord. We submit each one of us unto your loving hands, Lord. Father, you are great and you are awesome, Father. We, we all worship you. And Father, help us to walk in your prophetic, Lord. Help us to hear from you and be a blessing to others, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Nina. Thank you, everyone. And uh, all the best for all your courses.